Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, we're really excited to have you all here. And yeah, it's going to be a really great session. I want to go ahead and pass it off to Michaela so she can give us our agenda overview and tell us what we're going to be doing today. Hi everyone, I'm Michaela. I'm a part of the team staff at Vox and some of the content I create are articles and hopefully one day in the future video series. Um, today, we will basically be walking you through interactive tools you can use to engage people in a virtual space because I understand that it can be difficult. And I will pass it to Lyric. Yeah. yeah. So before I introduce Vox, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Lyric Esco, and I am a uh, team staff and facilitator here at Vox. So a little bit about Vox, we're leading a youth voice movement and we're basically, you know, celebrating youth voice through publishing and community leadership. We're a nonprofit youth development organization and we've been around for the past 27 years. So that's really exciting. I wanted to name really quickly what uh, our session objectives are for today. The thing that comes to mind that I would love for all of us to, to really um, think about in this session and in, in our work as youth development professionals is that high expectations are on both sides. And it's really helped me think through uh, the importance of having these conversations in a way um, that is a, a two-way conversation. It's not just top down, um, but it is about uh, how, how can we set up a, sa a safe space for everybody where everybody's expectations are named and being met. Here at Vox, we just want to give a quick tech check Check your background, check your environment, and make sure you're comfortable with sharing that. And then additionally, we want to check your participant's name. If you don't know how to change your name, what you do is, if you're on a laptop, this also works for if you're on a phone, you go down to the bottom of your screen, you should see a button that says participants. And when you click on that, there should be a list of names that pop up. You go to your name and if you hover over, there should be a button that says more. You click on that and there should be an option to rename. What you're gonna do is you're going to change your name to include whether you are right or left-handed. And then if you could go ahead and include your pronouns as well to try to also make people comfortable sharing that. And if you look at my name, it's just changed so that my pronouns are in parentheses, and then I have both for, I can write with both hands. And these tech checks are always important because when you're coming into a virtual space, going back to those expectations, you know, from the teens, they're expecting to feel like they're in a comfortable environment so that they can interact more in this virtual space. I'm gonna be telling y'all about the annotate feature. The annotate feature is a really cool tool on Zoom where you essentially have a, like a virtual whiteboard. If you're in a computer, the way you're gonna do at the top of the screen, there's gonna be a, 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 a black button and it's gonna say view options. You're gonna click on that. And then when you go down, you'll see something that says annotate and then the annotate feature will be up for you. If you're on a phone, you're gonna see a little blue button that has like a little pen emoji thing on it. And you're gonna click that and then you'll be able to annotate the screen. That's like a really cool way to annotate and like participate in real time. And then another cool tool that we have, um, we utilize is the chat feature. We've already, and I've been seeing a lot of people already using the chat feature, which is great. Uh, the way you find the chat feature is if you're on a computer, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little chat. It'll pop up with a little red notification anytime someone sends something. Or if you're on a phone, you'll be able to see it. If you click the three dots in the corner of the screen, you'll see it right there. And the chat tool is like a really cool way if a person like, let's say maybe your audio is really bad, maybe someone else is speaking and you just wanna like comment on a thought and everything. It's a really cool way to kind of, um, you know, still be in the space with, you know, physically, you know, being in the space. So for this tool right here, we're gonna have you uh, stamp an emoji on the screen of kind of showing like, how you're feeling right now. So go ahead and use that annotate feature to, you know, pick the pick the emoji feeling how you're most feeling right now. 
And again, going back to those expectations of trying to make everyone comfortable and make sure that everyone is in the right mindset to completely be engaged is perfect. So that's why we like to do these emotional social check-ins. Just wanna make a quick, te quick techni technical note that if you have young people who use Chromebooks um, as their laptops, you can't annotate on a Chromebook. So um, that chat tool that Lyric mentioned is really important. We tend to try to always give a chat feature option for participating in activities so people can add in. So in this one, you might say, which emoji are you? if you can't annotate. So we've already just gotten right to the point with all of this amazing technology. And um, before we go further, I would love to invite y'all to join in um, a mindful moment um, before we introduce ourselves and, and start talking even more about technology and, and all of those things. Um, so I'm going to invite just a, a few deep breaths with the group. And I would invite y'all to either, you can leave your screen up if you're feeling comfortable with that and connect that way. Or you can also, this is a great time to put your screen down if you need um, a little bit of privacy and, and time to yourself. And so I'm gonna actually put my screen down and I'm gonna root my feet on the floor, sit up straight in my chair. I invite y'all to close your eyes, maybe roll your shoulders back. And then just take one deep breath in. And then when you're ready, just exhale slowly. Feel your belly relax. Maybe your shoulders are relaxing too. We'll do that two more times. I appreciate y'all taking the time out to, to take some deep breaths. Uh, mindful moments for us at Vox are, are a really important way to set up um, the expectation of the space that we can be uh, our whole selves, including our bodies and, and honor them. Um, as well as uh, just, just ensuring that we're taking a moment to center ourselves. Um, I think that in creative work, especially, it is just a really important thing to welcome um, people in with, with a sense of wholeness and quiet and uh, pause before we dive into the, the good work that we all do together. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do our go around question. And the go around question is something we typically do at Vox um, every single meeting. And it's just like a nice way to like, you know, become familiar with one another, you know, ask an interesting question, find out something about someone you didn't know before. So you say your name, your age, uh, your place of work or your school, you know, if, you know, if it applies. And uh, our go around question and our go around question today is, what is your favorite thing about fall? So I'll go first. My name is Lyric, I'm 19, I attend Spelman and oh, pronouns are she, her. And my favorite thing about fall is apple cider because it is the superior fall drink and I will not be taking any comments on that. And I will pass it to Michaela. And now we will go over our ground rules. At Vox, we love our ground rules. In the beginning of every meeting, after we've done a nice go around as we just did, we go over just some rules that everybody shares out that would help them personally feel comfortable. And it creates a space where everybody, once, once everyone is comfortable, then they feel like opening up. And once everyone's more open, it creates you know, that increase in interaction and engagement with whatever activity you are doing in a virtual space. So today we will be using a Padlet. And if you don't know what a Padlet is, it's basically this tool you can use to archive any information or any thoughts or any expectations that you come up with at any meetings or events or activities you hold in a virtual space. So to use a Padlet, 
there are going to be different columns and the different columns will basically be your different sec sections. In this column that you see already, these are just the ground rules and underneath you can add some rules that would be comfortable for you. Like for example, we have the half fun or the one mic, which is one person speaking at a time. And you can just click you just click the plus button and then you can add a ground rule you would like to share and you would like to have in this virtual space when we're here today. And then there's also the add column button if in case there's anything else you want people to add ideas to that doesn't exactly go in the category you already have. So we'll just take some time for everybody to add their own ground rules to the Padlet. So to that end, I'd love to hear from some of you who put a couple of these um, agreements into the Padlet. What did you offer and how would it help you out? One of the things I put in there is uh, to be respectful. And I think sometimes we can meticulate almost too much with the, the, the minutia of all the different rules that are out there. Because let's face it, there's a thousand different things we don't want our kids to do. But if we can be general with some of these things like be respectful, respectful. I think that that really includes almost everything that you could you could think of, but you could also have discussions as to what that means. We'll return to this tool in just a little while because you can use Padlet for multiple purposes. Um, but now I'm going to pass it over to Lyric for a quick meta moment. Yeah, so a meta moment is basically a moment where we like to take the opportunity to just kind of like reflect on some of the um, facilitation practices that we've been doing. Everything we do, although it does take time, it is intentional to foster that community. Going back to doing things with intention, you know, the playlist, it brought in people, you know, with music. Music makes people feel good. It opens up that space. And maybe if you're stressed, you come in, you hear playlist, you know, it's, it's nice. You feel like you're welcome into the environment. And then when you do, the mindful moment and everybody takes a breath. It gives everybody some time to, you know, come to themselves and, you know, balance themselves out. And then you do the go around and everybody's connected with each other. So with these intentional things, you are trying to increase the amount of engagement and make everyone comfortable. High expectations are on, uh, on everybody's mind when they show up to these programs. And, um, Certainly, we've spent a lot of time over the last few months as a collective group of youth development professionals figuring out how to bring that into the um, virtual space and uh, just want to reiterate that uh, simple things like showing up and playing music really do really does make a huge difference. Um, calling our participants artists or content creators because that is exactly what they're doing. Uh, ensuring that we are taking time to, to use the right tool for the right activity. Um, Craig, you mentioned things being shorter and briefer and more accessible, and I think that that's a really important piece of the puzzle. Um, understanding that we do all have expectations, and so let's spend some time naming them. Um, I think that's a vital practice. And then taking time to get and give feedback. So how are things going? Is this working for you? Um, is it working for us as a team of, of folks that are putting the programming together and putting it on? Um, and then just slowing down, I think Alana, you mentioned, you know, taking those moments to slow down and take a deep breath and recognizing that everybody needs that. Um, Zoom fatigue is real, no matter the age or the stage that we're in. And so normalizing that as well. This session here today is really um, kind of dual purpose. It's how do we um, maintain and live into those high expectations in virtual programming? And how do we couple that with some digital tools, the high-tech tools that do just what you said, Michaela, and what you offered up, Opal, which is input. How do we stay hands-on using today's tools for virtual programming? So we're bringing to you three of the Vox team's top picks. Um, you've seen Padlet already, and we're gonna return to it before we close today. Just as a side note, in addition to using them for ground rules, we have been recently using them for reflections. So we used it for our new member training this fall where new members got to share out a takeaway or something that they wanted to do in the program. 
after their training. And we also used it um, at the board level with um, youth, teens, and adult board members planning our lights on after school event. So lots of different kinds of uses for um, Padlet. Now we're gonna shift and use show you two more tools. The first is Jamboard. And I wanted to ask Michaela to share a little bit about what you like about Jamboard and what we use it for. For Jamboard, it's nice to see everybody's ideas in one place because what you can do is everyone can add like a sticky note or like some writings or anything or even draw, which we used it for. And it's nice to see everybody's like big brainstorm, like just basically a big place to brainstorm since, you know, you can't really have that physically and you can keep it. So it, all of your ideas are stored in one place. So you don't have to worry about that. So I'm pulling up an example of a jam board. This is uh, ground rules that we did at an event that we hosted last week for lights on after school. And so participants can um, come in and use the sticky note function to add in much like we did on Padlet, but it, it really does look like a big whiteboard that that everybody can add into. And it is also a Google extension. So it's, it's a highly accessible and free tool. Susan just made a new Jamboard right here. So I think we're gonna get to check it out. Um, Susan, will you walk us through how you made that Jamboard? And then I know she's gonna drop it into the chat and we can all join in. I really just went in and, and hit, there was a, a little plus sign right down here. And I hit that plus sign and it made it very easy to create a new Jamboard, um, which I just named High Expectations. Because it's connected to your Google Drive, you can add documents from your drive, you can add images. Um, Jamboard is a really accessible way for a collective, um, collaborative um, piece of work. I see y'all joining. And then again, here are all kinds of things that you can have, you can use a pen right on the Jamboard draw on the Jamboard, upload an image, sticky notes. So this is just one of the tools that makes interaction, um, capturing information from a session easy to share back out. Um, another kind of whiteboard. I could imagine a group even doing a brainstorm or a storyboard for Maybe they're making a video, or maybe they're designing a performance, or maybe they're brainstorming an end of a class um, culminating event. Could see this being a highly interactive tool for all kinds of program collaboration. And for me personally, coming from like the student point of view, I like how colorful it is because a lot of my teachers use very, um, they're very dull. So it's nice when they come with energy and like vibrant colors, even if it is just in like a Google Doc, if they're just highlighting things, it helps me personally. Would love to invite you to add one way you could imagine using Jamboard in your class or your program. So let's see if we can take the next 60 seconds to click on that Jamboard and add either one way you can imagine using it in your work or if you're not sure yet and you have a question, feel free to add a question as well. Very cool. Well, we can save this Jamboard. Um, you can download it like any other Google Doc. Um, you, you can turn it into a PDF or an image to share out um, and y'all can keep playing around with it. Um, and decide um, or brainstorm. Use it to brainstorm with your fellow PPTAs, how it can work in your own clubs and your own uh, digital programs. Thanks for playing with this, y'all. The other tool we wanted to bring to you today is called Menti. And it is a polling feature that, um, again, Josie brought to our team at Vox. And we thought what we would do is use it in real time to get feedback from you about the time of day that trainings like this might work best for you and your colleagues. 
So it's in real time showing how you can use polling for input and for formative feedback um, for our continuous quality improvement. So in order to use Menti, it's kind of like um, all of the other tools that we have looked at where you can use it on the same screen that you're already working on, or it might work best if you have a phone or a second device. So what we're gonna invite you to do is go to www.menti.com and you can see that on the top of my screen. And you're gonna use the access code that you see where it says, please enter the code. We invite you to enter 4260677. And that's at the top of my screen too. And then you'll hit submit. And that should bring up the same exact poll that you see on the screen now. So we're asking you for your input um, on times for future trainings. And then you can click um, where it says select an option and you literally can click the time that works best for you and then hit done. So we ask you to give that a try. So you can see in real time, it is dynamic and can show in real time the participants input. And we, we used this poll specifically with um, teens in our program to get their input on which days of the week work best for them for um, the classes uh, or what we would call the um, trainings that we offer. For me personally, I can't vote yet, um, which is a bummer to me a lot of times because I really wish I did get that voice. So, you know, having a voice in the activities I'm doing and like being able to, you know, contribute to that choice, it just makes me feel like I'm more a part of the group. Yeah, I just think it's a really great way to get some anonymous feedback sometimes if you don't if everybody doesn't feel comfortable like raising their hands or um, doing that in another type of situation. And what I like about Minty too is there's a lot of different backgrounds you can choose from and a lot of different styles of polls. So the one that you did was kind of like a, a ranking, but they also have scales, they have word walls, which is really cool. Um, some teens have used them for go around questions. So you can use it for a variety of different things. This is one of our favorites and we use it in a variety of settings. Clue is really fun. Um, for those of you who've never done it, it's essentially like Jeopardy, but like if you could do Jeopardy like in a small quiz format, uh, like online and everything. And it's really cool because now there's a way to like get it to work via Zoom. So like if you're on Zoom, you can still utilize the who you just got like share your screen and have it. And also it's just like fun. Like everyone always gets like really competitive over Zoom. And it's like a really fun way to, I'm not over Zoom, over Kahoot. It's just like a really fun way to learn. So I, I just personally love it for that reason. Just cause I just, I just love quizzes and I love being competitive and like. That competitive nature Lyric was talking about, it comes out. Okay, you will see your students fight to get to the top of the leadership board. So we're going to give it a try and play around with Kahoot. And this Kahoot is, you know, in all the ways that we've been doing, we're kind of learning by doing. So we have a Kahoot today about <laughs> vibing with high expectations and high tech tools. So Susan is showing you the backdrop or the background of Kahoot. And she's going to take it away. So what you're going to want to do is like go on your phone or like device or device you're using and go to kahoot.it and then like the information will pop up and you'll be able to like join in. So I just showed y'all what it looks like on the back end is you after you've prepped a kahoot what you need to do to um, present it to your to your group and so. Uh, Lyric is going to walk you through it as a participant, and I, I just wanted y'all to see this back end piece. So um, we put together the Kahoot, and then you're going to invite other people to join. And so I'm going to choose Classic, and now it's on the screen that it would be for. Um, you can hear that music. <laughs> go 
code to kahoot.it and you're going to put in the code that you see right there on the screen and you'll be in the game. So when you're administering a Kahoot, you give a few minutes for everybody to join and then we'll launch the game when Susan clicks start. So you see the question at the top of your screen, which of these youth development practices, which of these is a youth development practice we can bring into the virtual programming to set a great vibe. On your phone, if you're playing on a separate device, you'll only see the shapes and colors. So you need to be able to watch for the answers on one screen and provide your answer on the second screen, if that makes sense. So all of the above, it was a little bit of a trick question, of course, but you all got it right. So um, you've already talked about how active introductions, social emotional check-ins, along with mindful moments, and a welcoming culturally relevant environment really helps create the vibe in the virtual space where young people, where people of any age want to come on and participate. Oh, this is the scoreboard Michaela was talking about where people get a little bit excited. So you get points for both your right answer as well as how quickly you respond. Second question, multi-select means there's more than one right answer. So which are of these four options are two digital tools recommended by teens for engagement and input? The red is my pad, the yellow is Padlet, blue is Dropbox, and green is Jamboard. Pick two. Yes. <laughs> so three out of four were correct answers this time. There's many, many uses for Kahoot. The only thing that we would recommend is that you not overdo it. Um, by doing it every single time where it feels like a chore or a test. And this is what Michaela was talking about, which was the, um, what did you call this, Michaela? Like the, the, the winner's round. Yeah, like the podium. Podium, yes. Yes, I literally will just study for Spanish because I'll know we're, we'll have a Kahoot and I wanna win. Nice, nice. Well, I will tell you that um, our co-facilitators today made some recommendations about prizes for winners. And so Alana, we're gonna send you a little prize. Y'all, thank you for participating. I also wanted to mention about Kahoot that it was actually a digital tool that made its way into the Vox culture pre-pandemic. Um, it's something that we really liked to use uh, in our, in, in purposeful ways before we went all virtual. And I, I think sometimes it's it's interesting to think about, you know, we won't always be here. And so what are the things that we might actually wanna take with us um, from this time and how can these tools be useful post COVID as well? And Kahoot is something that uh, has found new ways of being a part of our programming, but was also a part of our programming um, prior to, we, we have done a lot of things with it around like, journalism ethics and um, ensuring that we're, like Rachel mentioned, that we're checking for understanding and, and doing some skill building um, in that fun and interactive way. All of the tools that we brought to you today are A, free for participants to use and B, have mobile um, dynamic accessibility. Several of the tools that we're offering up have do have paid subscription offer um, options for the educators or for the staff at the club, but they're always free to youth and there's always a free version as well. So we're, we decided for today that we're gonna return to Padlet and play around with it there and ask for your involvement back on the first digital tool that we started with today to make sure that everybody um, has a good sense of how they would like to use this tool. So as the creator of the Padlet, um, what I will do, <laughs> nice, a great way to share artwork. 
Um, I am making a new column next to where it says high expectations where I literally just click on the Padlet next to it and it's gonna say, name your column. And I'm gonna write head, which is something you learn. And then you should see it there with the little plus sign underneath it. And so we're gonna ask you to click on that plus sign and share something that you learned. And now you can see that I've added head, heart, and hand, which gives an opportunity for you to re reflect on, which we all know makes more meaning of the learning. And it also is a formative feedback tool. It lets us as facilitators know what you're taking away from the session today. We also wanted to set it up in real time so you could see how this tool is dynamic and can change during the course of a lesson or is something that you can come back to um, each week since we know that your programs are multi-weeked and are scaffolded over time. So that um, what I mean by that, of course, is that the learning builds on each other. Feel free to take yourself off mute too and share one head, one heart, or one hand. Um, I'm thankful for uh, being shown the menti.com. Actually, the other day I was trying to find a website that would do polling like that, and I couldn't really find one. So you gave me the answer I was looking for. So thank you. Um, from my heart, I felt community, YI community, and um, also the hand. It's inspiring for me to, to see everybody and um, to have, you know, I'm going to take that back with me because um, sometimes with all this craziness going on we get I feel like I speaking for myself I, I I it's good for me to helps me to refocus so thank you everybody and I will echo what Mitch just said it's just always good um being a part of a community where you can learn and and grow and not feel that you you have to have all the answers or have to know it all there's a support team um, where we, you know, we're just learning and growing together and we're here to support each other. So that's a great feeling for me. Thanks everybody for your really active participation, your vibing in the virtual space with us. And as promised, um, here's a list of additional resources that we have compiled. We listed specifically what we use today in this session. And as you can see in the parentheses, we added a few other tools that we like to use in our organization. And um, Rebecca and Val added a couple that they wanted you to know that BGCA highly likes too. So for example, for online collaboration, you can see a reminder, we used Jamboard, Padlet, and Kahoot today. We also like Google Slides sticky notes, Flippity, some of you have seen me use that before. Scribble, which I've never used, but came highly recommended from some young facilitators. And then BGCA noted specifically Group Map and Trello. So here's a list of additional tools for y'all to check out and play with. Many of them, if not all of them, have um, video demos on how you can use them. And they're highly, often highly intuitive.